Hello everyone, this is Sean, and this is part four of the DeLorean Mark IV model kit build. And what I'll do today is I will show you the uh, progress I made on detail painting the uh, DeLorean, and I'll show you what I have left to do. Let me just find the parts that I uh, detail painted on during my Hobby Club week weekend meeting, which was last weekend. Ah, here we go. Okay, so we'll start with the um, the smaller interior pieces, dashboard, etc. So let's see what I got done here. Here we go. Here's the dashboard. Now, um, first I did, as you can see, the wires that are on top of everything. And I also did the, uh, if you look at the front, you'll see I did the white circles inside the dashboard. Haven't done, and I did the buttons, the time circuits and their buttons. Haven't used my fine black Sharpie to do the dials yet, but I'll, I will get to that. That's pretty well all for that bag. I did use the uh, still, steel gray, medium gray, to touch up the sides of the seats. You can see how it has a slightly brownish tint though. So that was all for those pieces. I didn't, I know I was at the Hobby Club meeting for almost four hours, but I had to wait for certain parts to dry before I could do any detail painting on sections next to it. So I didn't get very far, but I did do the interior bucket. I'll show you that now. Yeah. All right, here we go. So, for the interior cabin, I did the, uh, here we go. I did the time circuit handle, and I did the gear shift. I did the gold plate. And as far as the back side, I did all the silver, and I used some platinum. I did the black stripes here. I did the blue cylinders, did the red cylinders, and I even did the black dots on top here. And I did a couple of uh, antique gold dots here and here. Yeah, so that's pretty well everything there that I did as far as detail painting. So what I'm going to do next, I realized I took a look at the uh, back of the box and or even the side of the box and you can see the color. You can see the grayish color that the rocks are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, kind of mask off the tracks, mask off the track ties leaving just the rocks behind and use my various Tamiya light grays to, um, you know, respray the rocks. I know it'll practically be back down to the primer color. Yeah, well, probably could have left it primer gray, but then again, that'd be a rougher surface. <laughs> so anyway, I'll, uh, I'll probably use, uh, this tape to mask it off and then trim it appropriately. So I'm going to find my X-Acto blade. Oh, there we go. Now I'll do some masking and I'll come back when the job is done. See you in a few minutes. Uh, all right, I'm back. Thought I'd give you a bit of a progress update. I was able to use the thin pieces to mask off the railroad tracks themselves. I'm able to use a slightly thicker tape on the um, ties. And any time I go over, I just uh, carefully cut off the excess. So I can see I'm going to need some kind of uh, toothpick or something to get the extra bits up that I have cut off. I, I don't want to damage. I don't want to damage the underlying paint by using a sharp blade of the Exacto knife to cut it. So I'm actually trying to use the toothpick here, but. I see that I am going to have to cut with the X-Acto blade at least a bit just to create enough of a surface to cut to get the piece off but then you try to get underneath with a toothpick like so 
and pull and then see there you go so all that's left is actually on the track itself and the little bits that I have are not wasted because I can put them on the end of the track to preserve the wood at that end on both of them and that way I don't have to repaint the track at all once the gray is applied to everywhere else you can see yeah uh, the idea there you just take the spare strips and you add them to the end of the track so I'm going to uh, continue and I'll show you the finished product just thought I'd show you a half way through update so I'll be back talk to you in another five or ten minutes all right I am back so I'm about three quarters of the way done and you'll see the change in light that's because I uh, opened up the window so you can see the view I have, and with the curtains open, you can see all the die-cast model cars that form a nice backdrop. Model cars that you can't see when the curtains are drawn. So anyway, I'm going to continue here. Just a couple more uh, railroad ties to do. Well, actually, one more, and then I can do the uh, the end of the remaining three. So what I'll do, what I do is I cut off the extra pieces right along the barrier of the track, like so. Then you can use the toothpick. You can get get the extra tape here. Here we go. See. And you can use it for various things like uh, filling in the extra section of the track. There we go. This is going to be good practice for when I use a loose masking set for the next, uh, you know, the model build number 36, which will be the uh, thousand scale Columbia Enterprise. That's what I'm going to use the uh, first masking set from Lou for. That'll give me some practice with it before I do the... Uh, before I do the thousand scale enterprise B, I'm gonna get some practice on that. There we go. Yeah, you see, I'm gonna to have to uh, get some tape and get down right on the sides of the um, the tracks there, so that the wood grain is um, protected. There we go. There we go. There we are. That's better. So now it's just down to the, the small areas of tape. There we go. Just three more to go. And actually do the edges first. Wrap it around. Press it down. You only need a little strip to cover up the uh, horizontal surface. Not got to do it straight though, because you want to be able to get all the wood track, wood ties covered. Because you got to preserve that that color that they are. All right, one more, one more. And I can show you the completely masked uh, off sections of the train track bed.
where I use the toothpick and just take it along the side. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah, one more piece. Fold it over. There we go. So that, uh, that's it. Yeah, kind of mixed and matched, but you can see the entire, everything I don't want to have sprayed. Oh, oh, wait, don't forget the ends of the tracks. Yes. There's a couple of adjustments here. There we go. One. And... Two. There we go. There we go. See? Now let's check this end. Oh, got to close both ends off. Yep. A little bit. Because you want to make sure that everything that was copper stays copper. That's uh, what Lou talks about with his painting mask. He says, usually pick the color that you want to stay. Mask it off. Keep the masks on the whole time you're uh, spraying the color. So that means that even when the um, the rocks, you know, when the rocks are dry, well, the rocks are going to be, when the rocks are dry, what I have to do is remember which, um, which uh, tie needs to be returned to the proper color. That's the only thing then I'll unmask to spray it the proper color and everything will be good. So uh, that's the, uh, it's all masked off just with the uh, different uh, Tamiya masking tape here. So I'm going to go to the park. I'm going to uh, spray it with the various Tamiya grays I have and I'll come back and I'll show you the uh, results while it's uh, drying. So talk to you all later. That'll be a separate video. Then I'll splice those together and that'll be part 4A of the Mark IV DeLorean. So see you all later. Bye-bye. Back again. And I have completed the spray painting on the, um, the rocks. Now, I didn't have the Royal Light Gray. But if you look at the color... On the box it's pretty close to the uh, haze gray I found maybe a bit more in the steel gray range but that's where that's where um, hand painting can come in if necessary and if you take a look you can see that even even if I didn't get the um, tape all the way down I think it pretty well got the wood grain I can do any uh, spray painting corrections needed. And if you take a look at the top of the tracks, you'll see something I never saw before. Take a look at the top of the tracks. They're almost, just the top, silver. So I can hand paint them silver to, um, you know, make it look like it should. Because if, if you take a look at the wheel, take a look at the one wheel, even when I did the brass, or actually the copper, it didn't take it all. It didn't get all the copper on there. It's kind of a, more like a wash effect. But that's good because the rocks have the dust and everything. So just let it dry for a couple days. Leave the tracks masked. And investigate which one of the ties, either this end, or that end needs the um, the testers wood and I'll do that of course that means I'll have to mask the gray but what I would do with all the, the the tape that I take off one of the ties I can at least use some of that to mask the tie and that'll be all set so this will be uh, the picture for part four or no, actually, I'm going to wait until the color corrections are done. Put all the part four videos together. 
and decide what I'm going to do. What well, I'll, de I'll decide which uh, what what the screenshot will be at that point. All right, that's about all for now for part four A, and I'll come back with part four B, which will be the reveal of you know the correct color corrected tracks. I'll do that. So I'll uh, see you all later, and hope you have a good March break. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. This is Sean, and I'm back. This is uh, continuing part four of the DeLorean build, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, unmask uh, one of the ties, because I have to determine which tie... Oops, not that one. Okay, well, that's good. Which, which tie needs the... Um, the regular brown applied to it instead of the uh, you know it was hand painted with some buff that's strange that looks like a normal tie there and yet ah here we go I think I've got it Yeah, that's it. That's that's the darker one. So that's the uh, that's the tie that's going to need the um, you know it's going to need to be revealed so that I can I can uh, so that I can do the proper color on it. So I'm just going to give it a little cut this way along the track and it should lift up just enough that's where I'm going to use the toothpick now because I don't want to damage the paint of the uh... there see now I got the track revealed now you can see yeah. You can see right there that there is some uh, gray. Actually, I'm going to bring the um, camera down closer. Give me one minute. There, that's better. You can uh, you can see the um, the wood. Now, this is the it's the darker wood, of course. That's what you want revealed. But you see how there's still some copper remnants, so I'm going to have to do some hand painting to fix that. But let's see if I can carefully... You don't want to unmask the... Um, you don't want to unmask the train tracks. All you want to unmask is the wood underneath. So you see here how the two pieces of tape are kind of... Um, They're kind of sticking together, so I'm just going to do this, kind of like that, uh-huh, get it right against the track, and then just carefully slice right along here, try not to get through, there you go, that should work, well I tried to slice it, but, there. And then push it right up against the train track so that all that's left is the wood, right? And you can see that's not the color that you want the wood to be. Because if you look, say, at this one, right here, you will see the natural wood color, see? Now that's the color you want, and that's the color that... <clears throat> that can will make it. So that's the color you want. So you got to remask this like that. You've got to remask it so that it's covered up because there's only one track that you want to 
reveal here, not to just one. And the thing is, you can actually start covering up some parts of the gray track, you mean the gray rock, so that when you spray the wood color, you won't see uh, anything get wrecked. So, for instance, that can go there. You can start covering up the tracks themselves. I mean, the, the, the rocks. Yep. There you go. So all you have to do now is take off this end, there, and then take off the other end. So i got to do a little um, cutting here just in case. So cut right there. There, okay. And you just get under. There you go, and pull, and there you are. Now, you don't want the, um, the tape to go to waste, so what you start doing is you start putting it down beside the track, every piece of tape you pull off, you can start uh, masking off the rocks so that they, uh, you know, they stay the proper color they should be. And then you have this piece so you can uh, mask it off there. There you go, see? So you're already starting to apply tape to the uh, parts of the tracks that you, I mean, there you go. But you see, you see, you have got all the pieces revealed. Now, what you can do here is I will find the light steel gray, which is a folk art color. And I will see if I can um, just touch that up a bit. So I'll be right back and once I get the paint out and we'll see if that works. Be right back. Okay, thanks for waiting. I'm back. Got the uh, two paint colors here that I got to choose from. So first we take a look at the... Um... Alright, you can see the steel gray is too light. But you can see that the medium gray is too dark. And it is all... It's also the uh, color, you know, it's just a bit too dark. So I think the best thing to do is to leave everything as it is. Just leave the track exposed as it is. It color up the stuff, because unless I got a tester's paint. Be right back. All right, I'm back. So you can see the... Uh, different kinds of gray that I possess from the testers brand that I can use, hopefully, to uh, just paint a little bit there. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do the testing and I'll be back with the results. I got a test now. I'm gonna see if this works. Well, that seems to be a good color match. I'm glad that I had that friend who gave me a bunch of uh, testers paint ages ago. Well, about two years ago. It's a bit runny. That's the only flaw of testers paint. It's runny. But I don't think I actually have a... Uh, I think that'll do well. And uh, you can see how the entire wood slat now is fully uh, revealed, so it can be spray painted the proper uh, tester's wood color. So I'm I'm pretty pleased. I'm gonna, you know, maybe I will probably spray it tomorrow. Want to give the gray the rest of the night to dry, and then I will mask off the gray with the Tamiya masking tape. 
and uh, everything. Oh, see that there? That's going to need a bit of masking tape, too. We don't want that end of the wood, you know, right here. We don't want that to be revealed either. So just give me one second. I'll be back. There. And you don't have to worry about masking onto the rocks because the rocks are going to need the masking anyway to cover everything up to make sure that uh, you only paint the wood grain. And you can see how it got a little gray onto it, but it'll be fixed. It'll be fine. But what I am doing is doing this. So it's a bit more up against the actual track. You don't want to get any gray onto that wood at all because I don't have anything that can uh, match that wood color. So I want to protect it because that one didn't quite get at a right angle on the wood. So I want to protect it from any uh, paint contamination from the wood slat there. There we go. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty good. Everything should be fine there. And I'm going to get the uh, all the tape ready, because I'm going to need it to mask off the uh, the rocks tomorrow. All right, so we got this, we got that, and he got that. So between this tape, <clears throat> oh wait, you can't see it. Between that tape and the thicker tape, which could go in these sections probably. And then you got the two thin sections of tape there. That should be just fine for uh, masking tomorrow. Oh, and the uh, scissors, right. There we go. Ah, scissors. So I'm all ready to mask mm, this tomorrow. And then I can spray paint the wood grain on that one tr slat. I mean, you probably won't see any of the pattern by the time I'm done, but at least you'll see the, uh, at least it'll be the same color as all the others. And then maybe on Sunday, I can unmask everything, show you the three main colors, and then they continue with the detail painting. This part four will be the detail painting stage. And then part five will be the, uh, I guess part five will probably well be the assembly stage and therefore completion of the model kit. So that's all until tomorrow. I guess this is part four B. Well, yeah, and tomorrow we'll continue part four B, you know, final base painting. And then part C will continue with the, uh, the detailed painting of the ship. So I'll talk to you all later. Have a good night and see you on the weekend. Bye bye. Hello everyone, it's Sean and this is part 4B of the Mark IV DeLorean build. Uh, last night I masked off everything on the train track bed except for the one wood tie that I need to restore to the tester's wood color. The reason the tracks look gray is because they're all taped off and it's left over from when the rocks were sprayed. So now all the rocks are covered with the tape. But uh, as you can see here, I'm going to need to uh, just there you go. Now, keep in mind, of course, that I'm only going to be spraying a certain part, not the whole thing, with uh, the wood grain. See, this, this is the only part. But I'm going to have to get outside the tracks on this side. I'm going to have to get outside the tracks on that side. And then there's the central portion. So that's why it's probably going to need three bouts of spray painting tonight, today. So I'm going to do that and I will come back and show you the 
results once it's unmasked, but before I uh, unmask everything, because it'll need probably the rest of the day to dry, I will probably continue with the detail painting of all the DeLorean parts here, uh, particularly uh, using the ultra-fine black Sharpie on the gauges of the dashboard for the DeLorean, and then detail painting uh, the light blue inside the silver time circuit band brackets and everything like that. Maybe I'll even do some uh, black highlights on the uh, body of the DeLorean itself. So I will be um, back with all that and talk to you all later. Bye-bye. Oh, and by the way, it's a nice, uh, beautiful day outside. So it's a perfect day for spray painting. See you all later. Hello there, it's Sean, and this is the next uh, section of the DeLorean Mark IV build video. And in this video, I'm going to carefully remove the tape from the sections that surround the railroad tie here that you can see I, I put the, uh, I put the brown on. Now I'm only going to, uh, try to separate it from, you know, farther away from the tie, not, not get too close because you don't want the, um, the paint to be ruined. And of course, I'm going to try the other exacto blade, the one whose blade doesn't just fall out onto the tape. So I'm going to be right back. Right, I'm back. Hopefully uh, this uh, exacto blade works, although with its blade seeming to be jammed in its stand, and I don't want to risk cutting myself, so I'm going to try the, uh, the scissors and the kitchen knife again. Be back one more time. All right, I'm back. Uh, quite an adventure getting the tape off. In fact, I'm going to put the um, camera up on the chair so you can get a better uh, view down on the box. So stand by for that. All right, there we go. So you got everything down on the box. So uh, what am I going to do first? Got to lift it off its rotating stand thing. I'm going to try to go from, you know, these, these looser pieces here that are just random. They can be uh, taken off the Taken off the box. Uh, yeah, you can go underneath. You can do that. Mm -hmm. Just going to work my way from the edges. There we go. There. That's good. Yes, there we are. Mm-hmm. Excellent. You know, you can probably take all the surrounding tape off of everything and leave just the one railroad tie that I, uh, did the painting on. Assuming, of course, I can get at it. Ah, oh, there we go. See? There we are. Uh-huh. Uh, you can see the whole unmasking process, but yeah, why not? There we go. See, it's making sure not to disturb the actual uh, wood slat. That's, that's the whole point here, and that's why I have this handy uh, toothpick. So I'm going to come at the tape from underneath it. There you go. See? Like that. Uh-huh. There you go. Put all the tape into the same box I use for the, the spray painting, and that way it's not disrupting a nice box. It's just uh, going on to something that's already used to having stuff sprayed in it and everything. Because after all, I built that model. That was model build 32, the NX, NX01 refit. So we're getting our way along here. I'm, I'm not going to take the, uh, the tape off the railroad ties all the way yet because some of it is right up against the, uh, the wood that still has paint drying. But I can at least take the tape off almost everything else. And that way you can see the gray rocks against the wood grain of the railroad ties. I'll wait a day or two before I try and take the uh, the tape off the railroad 
tracks themselves. Got to give that uh, wood grain paint time to dry. But anyway, uh, that's just an example of the progress. I'm going to take off more and I'll come back. Okay, so you can see how I uh, got some of the wood off here. There was a bit of bleed over and copper remnants on some of the wood, but that's where I can uh, mix up some Tamiya paint for touching up. And that way every, everything should work out just fine. You can see the the copper here against the gray against the wood, so that looks uh, quite nice. And just uh, go along like so. That means most of the other wood was pretty well protected from the gray, and of course the tracks were pretty well protected also. So that's good. There you go. So I will, uh, I'll continue and show you the final result before we do paint touch-ups. Good thing this is part of part four, detail painting. Be back. Okay, I'm back. I, uh, down to the final stages now, just, uh, taking off the last pieces of tape from the wood ties. Have to sort of get the toothpick up and under it to do that, but it, it seems to be working out, and I realized something. In Back to the Future 3, this is a working train track, so the, the wood ties would not be pristine like they would be if the track was just laid down. Neither would the rails. Everything would have some remnants of track dust or wood shavings. Even the, the copper rails would be a bit... Uh, you know, no, nothing would look like it just came out of the shipyard. So I won't, I'm going to use that as a plot line excuse, pass off any paint mistakes as, uh, you know, in use. I mean, some of them have really uh, obvious lines where the tape didn't quite get there, but that's where I'm going to find a, a mix from the different folk art paints and mix together something that approximates the wood grain so that I can... I can fix it, because there are some parts that uh, are going to need some hand-painting touch-ups. That's why you should have uh, really done the rocks first, mask them off, you know, I should have done. But that's, you know, that's, that's learning. It's show the mistakes on camera, so hopefully uh, when you build this kit, you don't, you don't make the mistakes I did. I guess that's why the whole point of a how-to video. But there you go. There you go. There's the uh, final result. And I will uh, just take a picture from within the video because there's a way to do that. <clears throat> there. So that's the final result for the, uh, the tracks. I'll do some touching up. That paint is still wet on that tie, so I'm leaving it alone. That's kind of a mess, so I will do some folk art touching up of this. You know, when I get to that stage in the build, but that's pretty well the whole thing. And I will leave it like that. I'll probably take a, um, what I will do, one deliberate thing I will do is I'll take a silver sharpie to the top of this. So I'll be right back with that. All right, so I tried the different uh, markers here. I mean, the, the cr chrome pen, it's out of juice. The silver sharpie, as you can see, here is very very similar to the uh, gray of the uh, rock so I'm going to try the Bic platinum silver marker on the other track on this side eh, I don't know it just doesn't uh, it looks so similar to the um, it's so similar to the gray of the rocks. The This silver is too dull, so I'm going to have to try some folk art here. See if I can uh, get anything working properly. Oh. 
Okay, so I'll be right back. So, so uh, platinum marker it is all the way along the top of the uh, tracks from that area all the way. Just the very top surface though. No more than that. You just want it to look like the picture and be as uh, shiny as it can be. Yeah, I'm going to have to custom mix something for the uh, the wood grain because I don't have any um, browns that exactly match that shade. So I'm going to have to custom mix something for the wood grain, but that'll be uh, something to do for a later time. I will think of that, but in the meantime, I might as well use the platinum to go against the uh, rocks where there was still some copper remnants. That's... There's no problem doing that. Be a bit shinier than normal, but at least it's something. Gets rid of the copper anyway. Just a little bit of touching up. And of course there was a lot of copper underneath that you can't get at because the tracks are held in place. Unless... Let me see if the track is detachable. Yeah, not anymore. That's all right. There's a little bit of uh, a copper, but that's that's not a problem. I can get at most of it with this uh, marker here much better than I could with a paintbrush, I think. So I'll just get at what I can, and then they'll say, oh, there was just some copper spillover on the rocks from the... Uh, when they laid the tracks down, some of the copper shavings fell in, got mixed in with the rocks and everything like that. It'll, it'll all work out just fine. So here we go on the top of the other track with the Platinum Bic marker, which seems to be the best solution. It has some shininess to it, unlike the... Uh, silver paints which seem to have dulled themselves into a gray these days so that's unfortunate even when they're shaken up but of course those uh, folk art paints are four years old so that that could be an explanation there some kind of uh, shelf life issue perhaps anyway there we go Oop, little touch up here there we are everything's pretty well touched up making sure that everything's got coverage all the way along. Oh, and of course, just the top. So there you, there you, okay, good, got it. So let's see how well you can see, or if I have to, oh, that's pretty good. There you go. So, uh, picture time, there you go. And that is the, uh, for now, completed. Uh, once I create some kind of custom wood mix, I'll uh, go in there and fix it all up properly. Because uh, I don't have many browns in the folk art realm at all. So, you can see the three browns I have. Dark brown, almost a light orangish brown, and the white. So hopefully I can use my different mixing bottles here to mix them up and get proper uh, color out of them. So uh, that's something to experiment with at a later, later date, you know, bit by bit until I get to the final placing of the car on the train tracks. And remember, I have to, uh, I can use my index cards. I found out where they were, and I can use them for brownish paint tests until I get to the same shade that this is when it's dry. That's important. I found that out with the Excelsior. But anyway, that's all for this part section of part four, and I'll be back with the next detail painting build on the Mark IV DeLorean, and I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye. 
Hello everyone, this is Sean, and this is the, well, the final video of March 12th, the next section of part four of the Mark IV DeLorean build, where I have been uh, testing a paint mixture to determine exactly uh, what shade of paint, based on what I can mix up, is going to be the closest to the uh, Tamiya testers wood grain which you can see on the tracks here that's the main color but you see how the tracks have uh, gray from the tape and some spillover and they needed fixing and so after uh, filling one card I managed to get close on the second card until I finally nailed it down to the proper shade now you'll see um, I'm gonna set the camera up on the tripod so I can open up the bottle I'll be right back all right I'm back here we go. So uh, I have the bottle here, and I've got to be very careful because the bottle is, uh, well, it's right full to the brim. That's how much uh, paint testing I had to do to mix, but you're going to see the mixture there, see? So what I did is I took my uh, ah, sticker labels from when I bought these mixing bottles, and I labeled on the top, as you'll see in a moment, just got to make sure that the lid goes on straight because there's hardly any room to spare. But you can see on the top, I labeled it, closest mix to the tester's wood brown. Now, the first line in the card here, the one that's highlighted in blue, well, that was done on the very first end. You'll see how much darker it is. Okay. Then you see the second line where I added in some to me a metallic brown and I tried it on the uh, second end and you see it's still too dark so then I added back in some to me a buff which technically I still have because I, I ran out of metallic brown it's now empty I gotta go buy more and I ran out of uh, wood deck tan I'm gonna have to go buy more of that too so I'm gonna turn them upside down so I'm reminded they're empty but anyway that new mixture the one in green, third line, I did on this end rail here. And as you can see, it is virtually indistinguishable from the spray-painted uh, tester's wood brown. So now I finally have my mixture. So that's, uh, that's great. That means I can now touch up these rails and get all the gray off them and you know make them even make them uh, one color and the touch-ups will be virtually indistinguishable from what was already there so that's uh perfect so actually i'm going to um do some touching up with the brushes now and i'll be right back to show you the touched up result be right back just before i tackle the middle sections i'll show you the ends here that I have uh, done in the same color and you see it's a perfect match so I'm just there's only a couple ties actually that I have to do some corrections on the middle so I'll be back with that and I'll show you the result and I'll angle the camera better so the shadows don't get in the way of seeing anything and there we are the corrections have been completed and I made sure to go with the grain of the wood whenever possible however if there was a mistake at this end it was gray I painted that way if it was near this tie I painted that way so you don't impede the tie so I'm going to take the still picture now that's all correct there and that'll be the end of this section of part four and I guess now that the tracks have been pretty well all fixed I mean you can you can still see some copper and stuff, but I'll, I'll just fix that with my, you know, light gray. I guess I'll have to start working on the dials of the dashboard by now for the inner part of the DeLorean, you know, get the rest of the detail painting of part four done so I can do the assembly of part five. So I'll talk to you all later when I've got more to do and have enough to fill them. 
Hope you're enjoying your weekend so far and the beginning of your March break, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.